So this is me. This is your boy. You know who I am, you know what I'm about. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I like this better than Legacy Tarn. I know, it's sacrilege to me too. It's Legacy Leo Prime. And no, I'm not calling this Convoy because that's a stupid name that Japan continues to use for the dumbest reasons possible. And yeah, I can't believe that I like this more than Tarn. You have no idea how much I want to love Tarn, to sit here and proclaim that figure to be the best Voyager they ever released. But the shoulders should have looked like this and not this. Those are the ugliest joints on any figure ever, and I honestly would rather have the figure's head be melted with a lighter than have these shoulders, because at least from a distance, that wouldn't look terrible. Anyways, this isn't a Tarn review, but a Leo Prime one, and the robot mode is looking pretty good. I mean, it looks like a bodybuilder who's half put on his fursuit while wearing an Optimus Prime helmet, but it's still a cool enough design for a Prime. And if you saw my videos about this figure when it was announced, then you'd know that while I think too many figures get legs that are overly long, my main complaint with this going in was them being too short. But I'm happy to say that in hand, it's actually far less of a problem than it looked like it was going to be. I don't know if they elongated these a bit since the reveal or what, but he doesn't look like Detective Baby Legs anymore. They're still a little stubby, but completely tolerable. However, I found a way to diminish that even more. As you see, for once, there is some value to the weird double stack mushroom pegs that for some reason Hasbro now uses. While I have still yet to figure out what purpose this normally serves, you can use it to your advantage here, by removing the feet and dropping it down one tier to extend the shins. Giving him slightly longer legs, and you'd think that would look terrible, but from the front, it's hard to tell, and from the side, it's not noticeable unless you're looking for it. Obviously, this would be at its best if you had some kind of collar to go around this piece, but if your main concern is that the legs are stumpy, then this is an easy fix for that. Once you've dealt with the legs, it's fair to say that the look of the robot mode is easily this thing's most positive feature, as it is very distinctly an edgy Optimus Prime who just so happens to turn into a skinned lion rug. And honestly, that is probably the most logical thing that Prime could turn into if he was going to be an animal. I love Bad Optimus Prime. It was one of my first Beast Wars figures ever. But I don't know why the designers ever thought that that was the logical animal for Optimus Prime of all people to turn into. Can we please get a new figure of that? Also one of Nick's? Once you go around to the back, however, this thing gets pretty ugly. There is just so much more kibble on this thing than probably what should have happened. But the worst part is the part that you just know some sad weeb would cry about being missing. I cannot describe my contempt for the lion arms just hanging off the figure's elbows. This is a chunk of badly designed kibble from a 30-year-old figure that the show just pretended was okay to have, and as a result is here even now, looking worse than ever. This could have been tolerable if it was just mushroom pegged into the backs of the elbows, but no, instead the lion arms are attached by a bracket that pegs into a trash can lid that then pegs into the lion paws. This is the ugliest damn way that they could have done this, and it really does not help this figure's already extreme kibble problem. They've tried to justify it by making most of the kibble some kind of gimmick so the lion head can deploy some guns. This looks awful and stupid, and they really should not have bothered. And then the arms can do this blood rain shit that I do not care about. And then you have the tiny little door on his chest that you can open up to reveal Japan's complete misunderstanding of what the Matrix of Leadership is. Like, hey dude, what's the supreme force of heroic wisdom? Um, Buster Laser? Buster Laser. You really need fingernails to open this up, otherwise you are SOL. Head is pretty great, it's a really solid alternate take on the old Optimus design, and you just know the eye color is going to please the Optimus's eyes look better yellow crowd. We love those people. We also call them insane. I don't know what more to say about this though. It's just so classically Optimus with maybe a higher degree of chunk factor to it, with blockier shapes and silver ears as opposed to the normal blue ones. It's pretty cool, it looks kind of hardcore. Like this is Optimus with fingerless gloves for a reason. But let's be real, it's because he thinks he's cool, and there's nothing less cool than thinking you're cool. So, as I said earlier, this figure's best feature is the look of the robot mode, which is a little damning. I mean, sure, it's pretty cool from the front, but from behind it looks terrible. And even when looking at it from the front, it's still covered in awful aspects which are any part of it that doesn't look robotic. You know me, I love Beast Wars, but this dude doesn't wear it well. And he'd be a lot better if he just shed all the kibble and fur and decided to just be the robot he so clearly wishes he was. Accessories are lame. Really all they are is a bunch of boring needle pistols. They integrate with the alt mode in several ways, and they all have storage spots, which I only figured out while writing this video, but they're just so dweeby looking, they actually detract from how cool this thing looks anytime they're deployed. I almost wonder if these are supposed to look like Optimus's smokestacks. So the accessories, I think, are actually subtracting value from the figure. Like, you can use them if you want the whole thing to look dumber, otherwise just store them inside the figure and forget that they exist. And the posability is really underwhelming. Despite being on a ball peg, the head basically only rotates, but it can get a fair bit down thanks to a transformation joint that doesn't really lock in. Shoulders pretty much only pull a 90, but you're dealing with the most kibble I've ever seen in trying. And good luck cheating it for anything more than a 90, though I suppose Tarn is still worse at that. Normal 90 elbows and really unconvincing cheating for sword wielding wrists. Legs are only slightly impeded back and are fine the other two directions. Because of the weird shape of the legs, I think the knees only pull a 90 that looks like it's more. But if it is more, it's barely anything. And feet that have a pivot and essentially useless rotation because it's canted to the side, meaning by using it, the angle of the ground to the foot changes, so it's both ugly and hard to use. Ultimately, Posability would be really basic if it didn't have so much kibble in the way hampering most of it, and then all the specialty joints are some degree of uniquely flawed, so taking advantage of them is way more of a compromise than it should be. 
Now for the thing that really makes me enjoy this figure. The transformation is actually pretty fun and cool, a good bit more involved than most beast transformations. However, if you don't have fingernails, then you absolutely need a tool to get the chest open. There is just no way that you can do that without one. Once you get past that, the rest of it is just pretty fun. It's interesting, it's got a small number of cool little twists to it, and it has a lot of really satisfying moments where parts come together with a gratifying snap. This is the most fun I get out of this figure, and it's selling me on the whole package. But then the alt mode just kind of sucks a lot. To be fair, it didn't have to, well, not entirely at least. It could have made a pretty convincing lion with almost no kibble, even more convincing than Cheetor or Tigatron. But unfortunately, they not only completely fucked the sculpt up so it looks extremely uncanny, they also made the colors of it gaudy and awful on their own. Like, redo the head sculpt and paint it like it wasn't Kimba the White Lion, and this would look pretty good. And it would at least have that, because holy shit, this thing is a brick. Of the Beast Wars revival, this thing easily has the least poseable beast mode, after admittedly Rat Trap. I mean, all he's got is an opening and closing mouth, forwards and backwards front knees, rear legs that can go back and out to the side, and a rear ankle pivot, which does not look good when the only pose you can do with it is this. Like, congratulations, he's either skittering to a halt, which is at least a little endearing, or taking a pee, which is the antithesis of that. It also really pisses off my OCD that his tail swings off to one side. That is like a needle in my brain. So yeah, this is not even remotely the mode that you should be buying this figure for. The reasons to get this are the look of the robot mode and the transformation. All other aspects of this thing are subpar. Beast mode is an ugly brick, posability would at best be slightly below average if the kibble weren't in the way so badly, so it's even worse at that, and then the accessories actively make the figure lamer looking when you use them. And all that may lead you to question how I can prefer this over Legacy Tarn. Look, I'm going to be real. Even if it weren't for the shoulders, that thing still would not be the best Voyager out of Legacy. There are other Voyagers that transform better than him, pose better, and have better alt modes. But that thing still could have been great if it weren't for those shoulders. And something that's really getting on my nerves is how many people keep telling me that my opinion on that isn't genuine, that I'm not allowed to hate those shoulders as much as I do. Do you want my assessment on that thing? Tarn is a really solid figure with basically all of its aspects being at minimum average, and with most of them actually being a lot better than average. And I tried to make that clear in my video on him. However, my opinion is that I sadly kind of hate it. The shoulders make the whole thing sinfully ugly to me. There is not one pose that that thing can be put in where what dominates my attention is anything but the shoulders. It's all I can think about when I look at that version of Tarn. And I'm not alone in that. I have never been more thanked for one of my takes than I was for my take on Tarn's shoulders. A lot of people are sick of being told that they don't have the right to be upset about those. You are free to love the figure, and I don't want you to stop. I don't want to take that joy from you, but let those of us who don't like it start doing so in peace. Tarn is a better figure than Leo Prime is, guaranteed. However, I like this, and I don't like that thing. You are never wrong for hating or loving something regardless of what its objective quality is. That is why you can never be wrong for your opinion. It is subjective, and subjective and objective do not need to align. Objectively, Tarn is good and Leo Prime is okay, but you will always be allowed to feel however you want about either. And this is how I feel, and you can't logic me out of my subjective response. It doesn't matter that that figure is good. I don't enjoy it. I really wish I did, but it's hideous to me. And it's the same to a lot of other people, so stop gaslighting us about how we feel, please. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.